Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to usher you into, it's Friday, November 3rd. It is the first Friday, so I'll have your art guide for you guys today to talk about all sorts of different events that are happening this weekend as well. Next week, uh, the library will be closed on Friday for Veterans Day, but I'll still be here to do my morning show to kind of give you the updates on what happened in the uh, next week's election. So next week, we're having an election here for the mayor of Missoula. Uh, this would be the uh, second uh, mayor race in uh, less than about a year or so, uh, just because our last mayor died and we had to fill the seat in accordance with state law. And now it's going to be basically, as you're hearing this, uh, It'll be next Tuesday, which will be on, uh, oh, geez, I should double check the calendar, but 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 7th uh, is election day on the next following Tuesday. And essentially, Missoula will only be, basically be voted on the mayor and the, uh, the war representative, and that should only be affecting the uh, city of Missoula compared to the county as a whole. So anyways, that's kind of what's happening. Um, in and around the city of Missoula uh, as we go until next week. Uh, I hope you guys had a happy Halloween. We had a great uh, turnout. Over 2,500 people visited the Missoula Public Library for our Halloween-themed event on Sunday, the 28th. And yeah, there's a lot of great pictures online. You can follow us, uh, follow the uh, library on socials and also MCAT on socials as well. So let's talk about some of the top stories that are happening inside uh, the world and beyond. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken went to Israel today to handle humanitarian aid efforts as the Egyptian border has opened to a very small group of people with dual citizenship and foreign passports on Wednesday, including some of those who are severely injured from the bombing. President Joe Biden made an executive order on artificial intelligence after watching the new Mission Impossible uh, colon Dead Reckoning movie. Before signing the order, uh, Biden said AI is driving a change at warp speed and carries tremendous potential as well as perils. The executive uh, order touches on matters of privacy, civil rights, consumer protection, scientific research, and workers' rights. In other news, Montana will start paying a 28% more on energy costs as we go into the winter. The former uh, candidate for uh, the U.S. House out of Montana, Monica Trinnell, wrote an op-ed about this, stating, a deal with the Public Service Commission saw a request for an additional $100 million increase in rates across the state and will impact homeowners, renters, and small businesses. Monica Trinnell, former U.S congressional candidate is using her lawyer status to help stop this and hold the uh, the Public Service Commission and Northwest Energy accountable. This article was written by Trinnell for Missoula Current and asks how many times do you have to be hit on the head before you find out what's hitting you? Monica uh, called out Zinke, her former rival, for cutting cost saving services for 75% of families who use those services for cheaper energy. Northwestern's five highest paid Montana management executives are paid over $8 million a year. The rate uh, hike includes more than a $7 million in bonuses to these executives, which Montanans will pay for as a cost of service. <clears throat> As of now, uh, environmental groups may object to the filings of this increase and plans for an additional $300 million ask for the purchase of a gas plant in the future as they seek natural gas facilities. Uh, many PSC reps mentioned in, a, in an article uh, by KTVH out of Helena, they were quoted in uh, Jennifer uh, Fielder, uh, commissioner, said, I would uh, like to be able to say no to any cost increases. Um, and uh, she's the uh, vice president and a uh, quote in saying this uh, country has been uh, astounding cost increase across the board in every way and none of us like it. But the reality is that we have to follow the law and we have to allow utility companies that we regulate to recover their legitimate expenses, end quote. So, uh, yeah, that's happening there. Um, and so that's kind of uh, what's happening here in the state of Montana. We're going to go over to the UAW because that's a big uh, win for the union because not only do they win against, they had a deal uh, with uh, GM and Ford and Stellanus, which uh, kind of uh, ratified their uh, their bargaining chips. And in total, the union expects wages to rise by 30, 33% for top earners. This would be roughly $42 an hour for those uh Union workers, percentage gains for entry-level workers and temps will be significantly higher, up to a 165% pay increase for some low, lower paid Stellantis uh, workers. The lower workers, as I mentioned last week, uh, tend to be a revolving door of workers who do not get the same benefits as their Tier 1 workers. Hence, the tier system was created to make a divide between new and old workers, slowly stripping away benefits. And overall, the six-week strike took its toll in recent earnings, calling GM said, the strike had cost it more than $800 million, while Ford 
uh, which maintains a larger share of its production in the U.S., then it's uh, lost at $1.3 billion. And this is just in the last six weeks. And that story is actually from um, earlier this week. So who knows what kind of additional damage was done this week as well. 50,000 uh, workers managed to walk out after the six-week strike in a solidarity. It's being called a standing strike compared to the last big strike, which was called a sit-down strike. So it was a kind of an homage to the old strike. And so far, this has had a rippling effects to Toyota, uh, who field unionization, who don't have unions of their own. They raise their wages in perpetuity. And Sean Fain, president of the UAW, doing a victory lap, encourages other unions to call upon himself and the UAW for support uh, in other union efforts. A happy ending for the union works of the big three out of Detroit which will have ripple effects across the United States. And, you know, also a brief history, Ford uh, was the kind of the central company when it came to unions establishing that 40-hour work week that had the rippling effects, which affected many other places. Because in most manufacturing jobs, you'd work until the job was done, and then you'd probably get home way late at night and then have to go back to work as soon as possible. So it was kind of crazy back in those days, especially. Um, and, yeah, I mean, Here's something interesting as well. This is something that I also uh, did because I've been really following the whole Israel-Hamas uh, uh, tensions high. And then a lot of it has to do with the fact that there's a lot of uh, Western countries uh, debating and trying to talk about uh, ways to kind of mitigate a lot of the uh, civilian losses. And there was a debate. Um, and of course, uh, one of the things that, uh, that kind of struck me in terms of this was uh, Ben Shapiro and uh, who was at Oxford University basically um, kind of challenging students to debate. Mind you, he's an adult um, person. Dunking on, ki on school kids isn't the same as talking with other leaders from either side of the aisle, but many of the arguments uh, against Israel went far as pointing blame at a country many believe should have never existed, while Ben retorted, in many students' attempts to paint Israel as occupiers was met with how many Jews live in Gaza compared to Palestinians who actually live in Israel. Not to mention, um, when, in when it comes to the collateral damage in the bombings of Hamas, he also mentioned the Dresden bombings of World War II, which saw over 25,000 German civilians killed in a joint effort by U.S. and U.K. forces, Western allies. And of course, the, the, we must always refer to World War II to win arguments, right? That's, that's kind of how it is, because the past is, and as long as we consistently lean in on it for our crutch, we will be forever doomed to enable the humanitarian crisis on this scale. And I know I've not been really shy about this uh, kind of issue. It's the whole idea is that Israel is the dominant force. Gaza, Hamas is a terrorist organization and they have to be dealt with. But at the same time, there is also lots and lots and lots of people in the most densely populated area in the world. 1.7 million Palestinians are are currently displaced and over 27,000 residents were destroyed in the bombing campaign and an estimated 8,000 Palestinians are dead and over 20,000 injured according to the House Ministry. And they, they've been making a lot of comparisons to Ukraine and all that kind of stuff in, in terms of how many civilian deaths uh, there. But this has been going on for the last three weeks and there's so many civilian deaths, it's getting really kind of out of hand. And so one of the things that's happening today as well is, is that Anthony Blinken is coming in there to do uh, um, some humanitarian aid to basically uh, make it sure that a lot of the other countries, because you know, one of the things you got to understand is like this is uh, Israel is one of those few democracy, Western influence countries in the Middle East. Like every other country has some form of of, <clears throat> of you know influence based on Muslim religion background. A lot of those kind of guidelines to kind of uh, move a lot of things. There's theocracies. There's monarchies. There's not much in terms of uh, free democracies that are in the Middle East and a lot of those kind of areas. So you kind of understand that Israel is kind of alone in the region, even though it has a lot of international support for a lot of different reasons, for a lot of different uh, motives behind it. And then at the same time, you got to understand that from a Palestinian or the Hamas standpoint is that they don't want to coexist with Israel. And Israel in the past has tried in many ways to attempt to live with Palestinians. And then, of course, there's a lot of issues going on there as well, because there is those humanitarian crises that go on there as well in terms of some of the settlers in the West Bank that have been um, have there has been some violent attacks against Palestinians in West Bank as well from the standpoint of what their uh, Israel people who live there are referred to as settlers. So there's a lot of stuff going on there, a lot of tensions, and th there seems to be a lot of finger pointing and not to mention referring back to, like I said, the whole World War II thing again, 
but who knows? But maybe the U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken would be able to foster humanitarian aid in the wake of international pressure from both sides in Western leaders and the Middle Eastern leaders. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, Israel is the, is the only Western uh, influenced run country in the Middle East and is supposed to be a reflection of democracy in the Middle East as most if not all of those countries are influenced by their Muslim faiths. Missoula will also, if you are uh, interested in more of the local level here in the city of Missoula, Missoula is actually going to be hosting a peace vigil inviting people from the Jewish Muslim descent to come together for the goal of peace. This event will occur on Sunday at the University Center Theater at 5 p.m. Uh, this is how Missoula will be helping the community make sense of the situation further with Jewish, Muslim, and Christian faith leaders as they show solidarity to peace against a violent time. And, you know, uh, something else that happens over in Missoula, it's not as big of a deal, but it's kind of like the signs of change are happening in Missoula. Hoo-ha! Mongolian Grill has closed. Over the weekend, of course, it was one of my favorite places to go. I love Mongolian Grill. Uh, it was great. It kind of started out as Mongols, Mongolian Grill, which was the der derogatory term for Mongolians. So uh, many people didn't really kind of know that kind of stuff, and I'm probably pr pretty sure they don't want people to remember that part of it. But hey, I grew up in Missoula, so I kind of knew the kind of names of it, but we didn't, I didn't really think about it because I was a dumb kid. Uh, of course, after 25 years, the building put up a sign that said, we permanently close, and it read, thank you for... Uh, Missoula for a great 25 years. So this was just another victim of uh, the bubble created after the pandemic as those programs were meant to keep people afloat began to kind of end in many business who relied on these uh, the PPP programs had to deal with year plus of revenue uh, lacking which was frankly just was just not there and Tuat will join Denny's Subway on also on reserve um, and Lucky's Market on the south side of Missoula deals with closures uh, from the library as well. I also wanted to mention that Trapper Peak inside the library officially closed this week and now the library board will have to come up with a replacement. So if you ha are a small business and they're asking for prospective businesses to apply uh, to the county website under the current list of bids and proposals link. Some of those other smaller bids skew towards contractors and developers, but this one's a little bit more since it is a purview of the county a lot of these bids and proposals. And so, you, yep, they're just asking for a bid, bid or proposal. I'm pretty, and then uh, the library board will vet and decide whether or not it's a good fit for a Missoula Public Library. Most likely they're looking for like a simple place where people can get a coffee and probably a quick little lunch, kind of like a deli quasi thing. They, I don't know what specifically they're gonna be looking for, but as of right now, they're opening the section of the library for people to sit and hang out. But as it turn, but as a uh, cafe or restaurant, it's just not the case as it's going as well. So, um, and uh, in terms of development, since we're talking a little bit about that, the Y, uh, which is uh, spelled W Y E, which is on the outskirts, kind of near as you're going to the uh, um, highway transition, like you're going to Kalispell and Polson, that's uh, basically a little bit further past the airport, not to be confused with these, uh, the air, you know, Expressway, Airport Boulevard, a little bit further past down, there was dealerships in Harley-Davidson and uh, Big Sky Brewing Company. There's a lot, they're looking at that for workforce housing. The new targeted economic development district would generate the funding needed to install the infrastructure the country has, uh, the county has said, if adopted the new TEDD, TED would be the second place uh, it's called the Targeted Economic Development District. So that's a, another word for TED, not to be confused with tax exemption development. We'll get on that a little bit. But anyways, Target Economic Development District is being used to create workforce housing and be, because they are under the category, they'll be able to apply for grants and the district would be able to create a pathway for new, new tax revenue and grants for infrastructure. So they're kind of making this as, a, uh, as um, enticing as it possibly can be for the Build Back Better plan and efforts to create affordable housing, increase the housing stock to keep up with demand. And there's a lot of demand to live in Missoula. In terms of uh, ongoing issues with local county mills, and the state of Montana. So far, seven counties out of the 56 counties uh, didn't choose to decrease uh, the school mills from 95 to the 77.9 mills. The dispute stems from uh, differing uh, interpretations of how local uh, tax cap laws apply to the tax, which uh, produces revenue to help the state balance funding between tax based rich and tax based poor districts. The situation has now produced multiple cases pending before the Montana Supreme Court. So the state sued Missoula and many counties want to do uh, the reduction because the lawsuits that the people may file resulted in the totality of the mills to be paid back in full, causing some issues funding schools. So 
The issue what it would be is if they went forward with not reducing the mills and everyone were to do that thing, they would have that surplus of, uh, the, it was quoted in Missoula Current of $80 million more for schools. It, it's not the worst thing in the world, but they're not deviated properly. And so some counties have the ability, would be, have the ability to sue because of this uh, crunch in terms of taxes. And then instead of you know just taking the $80 million from it, it, essentially they would essentially take all the money back and then they would go basically into, uh, what's it called, uh, logistical hell in a way. And so it, it, it's, it's kind of like, a, you really can't win because lawsuits can kind of hold this up for in the courts and it will be a pending thing. So that would be a very bad thing for a lot of schools in the area. So it's a lot of things interesting happening as well. And speaking of schools, Portland teachers went on strike on Wednesday. So uh, the contracts uh, kind of went up, you know, they started the school year, but as of Monday, November 1st, boom, they went on strike. This was the first time Portland uh, teachers union went on strike. And so it's, uh, so roughly the salaries for teachers in Portland is 50000 a year, while cost of living usually requires about 47000 a year, roughly or so, uh, or $4,000, $5,000 a month for a family for not including rent, mind you. Portland is 24% uh, more than the national average in terms of cost of living. Portland strike is the first time the teachers of Portland leaving 45,000 students without a teacher until they can come up with an agreement with educators slash staff. In many ways, the strike in public education takes a toll on kids' education, and while the teachers who feel obligated to their students, they create bonds over the years. Teachers kind of act like a second parent to a kids because they're the first uh, adult uh, uh, non-relative the kids learn to bond with, essentially. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting how this is kind of going about, and that's uh, it's one of the first, but it's it's the first in Portland, but it is one of the many things that are going on as well. And one of the things, even in, in terms of like local schools, you know, Missoula teachers have had it pretty good for a, a good amount of time, and it's been very competitive, but because of the pandemic and a lot of stuff, those kind of things are starting to kind of show their ugly face. Uh, a lot of those uh, safety net policies from the federal government started to erode and it's like oh okay so now we have to deal with the uh, consequences of all this kind of stuff and so there's a lot of people who are not getting paid as much and are worked to a certain degree where they have too many kids in, these, in the classroom per teacher so the, it's it's definitely an interesting kind of uh, dynamic how it's going on like that and it's kind of it does kind of stink that they have to strike in the middle of a school year so that that definitely adds a little bit more leverage to their claim but also at the same time it's you know it's teacher strikes are hard because it, it's even harder on the children who just don't, don't really kind of understand a lot of these situations but you know it's you know it's a, it's all about uh coming to terms with not being paid enough and just uh just not being able to make a living on a teacher salary just in general so that kind of concludes my uh uh my morning news stuff Here's a promo of a couple other things and a couple other Saturday drop-in kids stop animation videos for you guys. And when I come back, we're going to be talking about some movies. You have to wake up. Listen to me. MCAT's Kid Centric Activity is back with Saturday drop-in starting September 2nd. This weekly creative experience lets kids use stop animation to breathe life into their Legos and more. They're only limited by their imagination. And here at MCAT, we promote creativity for kids aged 8 to 14. Ah! Join us inside Missoula Public Library every Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m.
don't cats like mice? I totally didn't do it. Winter Blues got you down. MCAT is back once again with Winter Days. Stop motion, movie making, and more with a seasonal camp. Winter Days is three days of fun from December 27th to the 29th, starting at 10 a.m. Stay cool, Missoula. Hey guys, welcome back. Well, let's talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend. It's time for Pre-Critic, where I prejudge a movie based on absolutely nothing except for my biases towards movies that I've watched. I'm a cinephile and I love movies. But uh, these are the kind of movies that come out um, post-Halloween that are uh, horror movies, so you know that they're terrible. So listen carefully, as in we jump into this movie called Listen Carefully. Enjoy a series of dad jokes and puns as they are the only are they one and the same and throw a psycho killer into the mix and you get listen carefully. Join a father who claims to know best by killing the bad teenagers. Uh, this is a little parts kidnapping and whole parts revenge flick and manipulating the, the dad to do things for the kidnapper uh, through the baby monitor, which at this point could easily be tracked. But, you know, we're not going to get into, you know, real life logic for thriller just guys as a horror film. So anyways, that movie is coming out this week. Um, today is Crypt of Evil. Those stone stairs uh, to nowhere means it's time for, say it together, Crypt of Evil. Although crypts tend to be downstairs, this picture indicates the last thing you see before the crypt that only can be described as not a good time to be at. Let the group of friends do some cave diving type stuff only to be picked off one by one in this horror tale reminding us that stay indoors, folks. Then we got a movie called Dark Heaven. Just when he thought it was a safe to be indoors, it's like horror films don't want to be seen, uh, w <laughs> which is why they are releasing November. So, However, we must wait for Thanksgiving, the horror film by Eli Roth, for a little while. Dark Haven is a film about a lady who is trapped in the basement and has to escape in dangerous saw type area only to be chased by a monster. This movie is very low budget. They invested over three people to appear in this movie. From what this picture shows, she'll have a bad time at our enjoyment. Horror movies. Um, while the last girl is stuck indoors, this will remind you, again, let's say this movie together, there is no sanctuary. This movie is the aftermath of a zombie outbreak and quarantine zone. Uh, Zack Snyder, eat your heart out as they dive into yet another zombie movie that has lost all the goodwill with The Walking Dead that has basically saturated the uh, uh, Walking Dead market. And, you know, the only thing watchable on AMC, which at this point, nobody really watches the AMC channel anymore. <laughs> anyway, so anyways, those are all the movies that are coming out uh, this weekend as well. And I have a movie for you guys from the 1944 movie that I redubbed, Dabonga. So here it is. Someone, I'm, help a, me. I'm an ape. I'm going to rip oh, your arms geez. off. See, like oh, this, whoa. I do this table. See, I'm really strong. That table looks heavy. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm let's coming. stop. Uh, Don't oh, do that. Oh, oh, geez. That's not cool. Can I just kill him a little bit? I'm going to talk Thank to you about you. this later, okay? Okay, fine. Oh, geez. Yeah, go sit down. Go sit in your corner. How, how the, how did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> that was a close one. <laughs> Looks like Beauty defeated the Beast. What do you think about that? That's not the worst line I've ever heard, but it is pretty good. Oh, so how'd you get the uh, creature to do what it's told? Oh, uh, you know, treats and bonding at birth. It's a trade secret. I'd have to kill you if I told you. I told him. Can I kill him? But anyways, what's your deal anyways? Well, I'm six foot two, which is tall for uh, 1944. Darn it! Um, uh, is he supposed to be doing that? Because he's kind of making me... Uh, just come outside, okay? Uh, uncomfortable with this particular circumstance, so let's, yeah, let's go outside. You can't see me, can you? So over here is a nice little bench that my monkey friend made. Oh, uh, it's, uh, nice. Hmm. Very smooth. You're not as hairy as my other boyfriends. Oh, you say boyfriends? Um, well, they're not quite my boyfriends. I'm currently not seeing anyone right now. I'm playing the field. But I just can't seem to get past, like, the first date. Well, you, uh, well, you are dating apes, aren't you? Well, they're the only things I know. Like, I've never been with a, a no-haired ape like you and before. And you never will. 
As long as I'm alive. Huh. Come on now. <laughs> Is uh, he your boyfriend or something like that? Oh, Jeremy, no way. He's like my best friend. <laughs> That's good that <laughs> he won't kill me, right? Will he? Well, yeah, sure, he's his own person, but, you know, I'll tell him not to, if that's okay. Uh, how do you actually... Well, eye contact can be very awkward, because they don't really like the eye contact. Oh, yeah, yeah, we should probably change the subject then. Um, so how are you? Well, my measurements are 30, 24, 30. I really like to have mimosas on Sundays with my girlfriends. <laughs> then we throw dung at each other. Okay, we should probably change the subject. You know, I can tell you that you're listening, but you're not really listening. Oh, no, I get it. It's just, uh, <clears throat> well... You know, your friend over there is kind of a... Go on, say it. Yeah, what are you trying to say? Are you just hateful towards people like him? No, wait, no, it's not like that. Oh, come on. Um, when precisely are you coming back? <laughs> Welcome to the friend zone. <laughs> back we're not doing city council today because we didn't have any city council meetings because it was the fifth monday of the month usually city council uh doesn't happen on fifth mondays of the month they always happen on uh, uh, a four-week kind of schedule unless there's specific holidays federal holidays but also uh according to their bylaws they also get the week of spring break so just a little fun fact right there so we're going to jump right in we're going to talk about some of the uh stuff that you can go to for first friday and first friday happens every First Friday of the month makes sense, and it happens from about 5 to 8 p.m. is the peak times. So kicking things off is our first gallery from the uh, Clay City of Missoula. It's called Paths Crossed. Uh, it's a reception featured works by students at the University of Montana graduate and post-baccalaureate programs in ceramics. Sasha Barrett, Lily Luna Bennett, uh, Lane Chapman, uh, Ellie Dutcher, Abby Fitz Kim, sorry, Megan Foster, Anna Johnson, and Joy Taylor. As students at the University of Montana, the artists of the exhibit will share works that reflect the commitment of the University Ceramics Department towards individual expressions and experimentation, including in shows that will be diverse representations of contemporary ceramics, including contemporary unitary, uh, unit uh, Terrian pottery, ceramic sculptures, and mixed media works, all those fun <laughs> all those fun buzzwords for sure. Um, and probably some influence by uh, Rudy Audio. Um, and this, uh, yeah, so anyways, Woven is a, uh, another part of the, okay, First Friday is hosting uh, Woven at the Artist Shop, uh, contemporary calligraphic, uh, calligraphy artist uh, using ink, gauche and watercolor on a, a variety of papers. The power of calligraphy is the uh, is that unites the meaning of the written word with a beautiful with the beauty of the visual arts. And the show runs the month of November. Most of these will be all of November. The big premiere is usually for the first Friday day. So even if you miss tonight, you can always go anytime at these various locations. And speaking of various locations, Missoula Art Museum is the main staple of art in Missoula. Free expression, free admission. You can go in there, look at a lot of the great art provided by uh, many community members and board members of the Missoula Art Museum. This is with Molly Murphy Adams, and this will be about. It will be in attendance uh, to talk about her art exhibition, uh, "The Space Between." And now I got that song stuck in my head again. All right, um, November fourth. Uh, no, not no. Um, happening uh, tonight at the Confluence Center. Uh, painter Laura Blue Palmer creates a work of about memory and place. Her new body work is about color and capturing emotion, celebrating the places she has seen and mapping out the life she's lived. Laura's work is captivating in the soft pastels and movement in streets to the nature and landscape lover, lover uh, and a fantastic display of Dia de los Muertos artwork and visits from the traditional and culturally representative altar, creating the for a special time of the year in, to honor loved ones who have passed away. The tradition is commemorated on the November 1st and 2nd in which the spirits of the dead are believed to return home. To welcome them, families create altars in the honor of them vi uh, to, or visit cemeteries to clean the burial sites, adorning them with flowers, candles, food, and beverage offerings. Built on site of the local Mexican friendly and community, this altar will be uh, demonstrate and share time-honored building practices from Mexico, Oxa, uh, Oxana, 
Oh, yeah, various places of Mexico and Guatemala. Excuse me. The uh, exhibit will be open to the public for first Friday and from 5 to 8 p.m. with live music by uh, Bird Bath. The Convolution Center is located at 119 West Main Street, Missoula, Montana. Uh, then we got, uh, this is actually a bunch of different events happening at this particular shop. And this is uh, a Porta shop. Uh, you know, flower, it's, it's a night of tarot card reading, flower installation, and gorgeous handmade candles. And then there's, uh, with the five flowers from uh, Field Five Flowers and Nectar Tap Design, a hanging autumn installation and collaborative uh, tablescape. They'll have a inspired by Montana grasses and wheat in design this season using simple ingredients to create elevated uh, visual experiences, monochrome uh, palette to uh, lend highlights, uh, linear and texture elements to local and frying uh, grains and grasses. Waxing Moon will be uh, bringing a cur curated collection from the product line of tapers, molded candles, and cement. So that's what's happening at the Aporta shop. I've never been there. I've never actually heard of it before. Might be a, a whole new uh, kind of like their premiere of their First Friday event type stuff. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Radius Gallery is celebrating their 10th anniversary and they're with a holiday show with over 100 artists contributing to a wide array of affordable artworks in its most wonderful time of the year for collectors and gift givers alike for Radius Gallery's 10th anniversary holiday sale. They created Wild Wondrous World, a special show within a show that unfolds in three segments. Each segment includes lively artworks by eight to nine artists. We expressly invite to help them celebrate. Um, artworks will go online the day after the opening and new works will be introduced throughout the run of the show. So it's gonna be a, quite an event happening tonight on First Friday. Then we got Journeys of the Heart. This has got Gallery 709 inside the art and framing. This is on Ronan Street, 709. This has got a little bit further away, but next to the train track, if you're going down 6th Street. Um, Missoula Arnold, uh, Linda Helding, Katrina Rumland, and Bonnie Tars will show mixed media sculptures, beading, collage, and weaving, and it's happening tonight. Then we got number eight, Alpine Line Art. This is at Eagles and the Valkers Western Frontier. Christina's works explores our human connection with the natural world and explores the deep compulsion to explore and experience natural places through a variety of live experience, such as skiing, mountain biking, hiking, clean, climbing, fishing, etc. The title of her business, Alpine Line Art, refers both to the fleeting lines we uh, live on the la leave on the landscape by engaging in these activities and to the lasting lines of the landscape leaves on our uh, internal experience. It represents the connection between the individual and their environment. The ultimate goal of her work is to explore the serene peace and unbridled joy that life lived in nature can provide. Finally, yes, we have a lot of things, and this is that Bernice's Bakery. This is a collection of bright and beautiful Montana West themed watercolor paintings and greeting cards from the local artist. Annalise Mann. Annalise is an outdoor enthusiast and family medicine resident based out of Missoula. Her most meaningful inspiration comes from sharing humbling scenery, challenges, obstacles, and the flow of state with friends and families who are recreating around the western United States. And that can concludes all your art stuff for uh, First Friday. And just let you letting guys know, this is the uh, premiere event, usually from 5 to 8 p.m. A lot of just kind of open house kind of stuff. A lot of people around, but if you want to go at any other time, just refer to the open hours. I always like to tell people 10 to 4 p.m. is a perfect time for most businesses because it's not towards the end of their shift and it's not in the, in the beginning a lot of times. So. Um, but then again, if I think about it, just kind of offhand, most things in Missoula don't even open until 11 and some places are not even open on Mondays and Tuesdays. So there you go. Up next, we have a, another video from the Montana Book Festival. Um, kind of a... a kind of connects to what I've been talking about in terms of how art and nature collide. And so this is uh, where humans and wildlife meet with Sneed B. Collard III and Christopher Preston discuss the intersection between wild creatures and human society. And yeah, he's going to uh, talk a little bit about this and I'm gonna cut him off as he's uh, uh, referencing a book. So here he is. This book kind of gave me a platform to start thinking about that. And how can we change this? And so I do have lawn in, in my house, but I've tried to devote at least half of the space to native shrubs, trees, flowers. And it's tough in a place like Missoula because you have these animals that are doing very well called deer, right? 
And deer are basically this, these pests. And so when I, we moved into our new house, I put in all these beautiful hand-picked native flowers. The deer loved it. It was like a smorgasbord for them. And even if they didn't eat them, they would come and tear these plants out by the roots and throw them over there. And so I, I realized that there are certain plants that will survive this deer onslaught. Uh, but for the others, I knew I had, I realized I had to protect them. And so, uh, but it's well worth it because now 15 years after we moved in, 18 years, uh, we've got this yard that attracts wildlife. And it used to be I wanted to promote birds, right? Now what I want to do is grow insects. That's my goal, is growing insects. And because if the insects are there, the birds will come, right? And since we moved in, uh, we've had, we've, my son and I have counted 67 species of birds in our yard. And which is almost the total for our first big year that we ever did looking for birds. Uh, All right, so there's a little taste of the uh, Montana Book Festival. Again, this is available on our YouTube page. Um, the Montana Book Festival, where humans and wildlife meet. And so that's the title of this particular one. And it's Need Be Caller the Third and Christopher Preston, who discuss the uh, intersection between wild creatures and human society. And that's just one example of about how you can cultivate the, uh, your uh, land and your acreage and your nature around you to uh, invite nature to come to you. So that's a, a fun little uh, ad, um, advantage of that as well. So without further ado, I'm going to uh, start wrapping up my show with a little bit of events that are happening within the city of Missoula. Welcome back. I hope you guys get a chance to look at the mini programs on MCAT's YouTube page and website, MCAT.org. But your best bet to keep up to date program at any time is our YouTube page on the M MCAT TV Missoula. Those are many of the programs, Montana Book Festival, uh, Mark Gibbons, the Montana Poet Laureate, has been killing it with all these uh, poets and people reading poems. Just a lot of great programming. Um, and then, of course, my program, which is kind of like a sister channel under the moniker of Wake Up Missoula and through the Facebook pages as well at MCAT TV in Missoula. So Missoula's community media resource, blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. So uh, Pickleball, hey, people love Pickleball, and why not do uh, Pickleball uh, through the Lifelong Learning Center. Lifelong Learning Center is a great organization that kind of has these kind of like night school, uh, daytime school for continuing education activities and more. As they, it's a it's a great way for people to kind of go to like some kind of collective, um, get in, involved in something and just try something new and also get certified in various things. Life Learner and Center. I've always been a great proponent, and they're like it's 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 more than just like night school for a lot of people who just want to get their GED. So I just want to always want to promote them, and I always love those guys. Um, Missoula a Museum Open Hours. Uh, so this is the Spectrum uh, Museum on the second floor of this Missoula Public Library. The University of Montana Spectrum Discovery Area is open for visitors of all ages to explore science through engaging exhibits and activities on the children's floor of the Missoula Public Library. Empower Place, open play hours at the, uh, the food bank. This is equal parts community center, uh, food bank, library, and science center, uh, all, all under one roof, also at the Missoula Food Bank. And also the food bank is a wonderful resource for a lot of people who look to uh, save some money, getting some nutritious and locally sourced food. Um, family fun time, uh, 10 a.m. Um, this is a lot of indoor fun as the weather gets a little bit cooler outside. Three options are a great example for getting your kids active while they're stuck indoors. Um, YMCA, uh, Mismo Gymnastics, and Rooks Outdoor Sports Center are prime examples of indoor fun places. Plus, they got that new trampoline place that used to be Flying Squirrel. Uh, a lot of great opportunities for kids to kind of stay indoors and have some fun along the way. There's the Valentine Center. Uh, just off of, just across from Pacific Steel. That is another one of those resources people use for indoor uh, soccer and also dodgeball. A lot of great opportunities with that. Stolen Water Summit panel on dams. University of Montana is going to be uh, hosting Angela Parker, Paige Johnson, Xavier Lovato. Um, this is going to be at the University of Montana NAS uh, building 011. And they're beginning to talk about uh, dams in Missoula, in Montana, sorry. Uh, so Stolen Water Summit, this is an ongoing thing. They're going to have a lot of different things. It's going to necessarily be at the Payne West Indian Center at the University of Montana, just uh, outside the Oval. They'll be doing a bunch of events happening um, at the university, and also they're having a wrap-up show later uh, after the weekend as well. So that's going to be an interesting thing to talk about. 
um, you know, just how ecology and the landscape changed because of dams in the state of Montana. So that's very interesting. And now let's move on. Okay, Tiny Tales and Story Time, 10.30 a.m. at the Missoula Public Library every Friday. A great opportunity for kids to get engaged with reading and also have a fun activity uh, adjacent to it as well. Lunch at the Missoula Senior Center. This is a recurring event on weekdays, Monday through Friday, 10.30 a.m. Great opportunity for people to pay $5 for a, a lunch, $8 if you're not a senior. You don't have to be a senior to go to the Senior Center to get a lunch. And they have chefs there that cook food for, for folks. Uh, yarns and watercolor at noon. Uh, this is a recurring event happening every Friday at uh, 12 noon. It's a great way for people to knit and crochet, make that uh, um, scarf they wanted to get their kids for the holidays. And watercolor for people who wanted to just uh, have something uh, uh, just to enjoy. We, uh, th uh, the library's own Bob Ross, otherwise known as Rob P, will be hosting those. Um, Stolen Waters, like I said, this is the food sovereignty panel. And so uh, uh, Ruth Plenty, Sweetgrass, She Kills, uh, Sid Fellows, Nicole Bentley, ben Benali, uh, Sheriff Smith will be at the Indian uh, Health Center at the University of Montana at 2 p.m. this afternoon talking more about the Stolen Waters Summit. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. The library will be hosting Lego Club at 2.30 p.m. as always, a uh, weekly event on the second floor. Aspire Middle and High School Open House at Learning with Meaning. This is going to be at the old Missoula Public Library just across the street from this public library. And then this is an open house to encourage parents to be like, hey, you know, public school education isn't for me. Maybe I'll just do a little bit smaller and more uh, kind of hands-on education with my kid who, need, who's, who might be struggling or who's kind of underwhelmed with the uh, public school education system. And it is, it's located at the old library. They're enrolling for their 2023-2024 school year. And then further uh, on the Stolen Water Summit, they have a feast round dance and drumming at 4 p.m. at the Payne Indian Center at the university right in the Oval area. Uh, GLOW is the open air fifth anniversary fundraiser and art auction. GLOW is going to be at the Missoula Public Library and they're doing a fundraiser and art auction. The evening includes live and silent auctions featuring newly works by 30 artists, local artists who use the Missoula Public Library as a creative inspiration. Enjoy a seasonal tapas, buffet, cash bar, and live music by Cork and Spark. Come enjoy the open air commitment to creativity and collaboration in Western Montana. All right. Annie Kids, so if you like the uh, play Annie, the MCT does the original take on Annie, Lil Orphan Amy. Annie, from the beloved comic strips and Broadway's Tony Award winning Best Musical, is living a hard knock life in 1930s New York orphanage run by a cruel Miss Hannigan, but she dreams of better times with loving parents and lots of adventures. As luck would have it, Annie crosses paths with a New York billionaire, Oliver Warbucks, and his assistant Grace Farrell, who might just change her life forever with help from her friends, her loyal dog Sandy, and Annie's own indomitable spirit. She'll stop at nothing to find a home and achieve her dreams. And this is going to be a children's theater performance, not to be confused with the community uh, performance, which they just ended their run of Young Frankenstein last Sunday. Matchstick Ski Movie, The Land of Giants at Free Cycles, Missoula. Missoula Free Cycle Team Fundraiser shows the new Matchstick Movie. Come down to support your favorite nonprofit ski team. They'll have a free beer from Big Sky Brewing, support the raffle, and win a pair of skis and more. Starting at 6 p.m. at Free Cycles tonight. These are a lot of the events that are happening adjacent to First Friday, and they might also have the First Friday moniker associated with them, but, there, but I had your art guide. This is more of just your event guide for your First Friday as well as we're going into this. Imagination Brewing Company is hosting a folk musician, Natalie Boise. Um, University Adam Center is hosting John Party, Mr. Saturday Night World Tour. That's a big, a big event, probably $100 tickets more. Uh, that's Saturday night at around 6.45 p.m. Blue Shadows, 7 p.m. is going to be a playing at Cranky Sand Public House, playing some blues music. Uh, Missoula Symphony Association, Symphonic Variations. This is the 20th century composer Meg, uh, Margaret Bonds, known for blending classical folk and African-American music in innovative ways, showcasing her influence in the 1964 piece, The Montgomery Variations. And this is going to be at the Denison Theater tonight at 7.30 p.m. If you missed it, it's going to be also on Sunday at 3 p.m. So if you miss the uh, night show, you can always, oh, darn. Uh, you can always do the uh, matinees on Sunday. Stolen Waters, they're going to do a closing celebration at the Zach. So uh, Stolen Waters Summit is uh, 
they're going to be talking a little bit more about this and they'll have their closing ceremony at the Zootown Arts Community Center. Night Blooming Jasmine is going to be playing some folk music at the Old Post. Electronic music at 9 p.m. is going to be at uh, Groove House Neon Love at Monks. Uh, Jacob Roundtree is going to be at the Top Hat. And then, like I said, we're uh, dealing with a Saturday without a farmer's market. And so there's a lot of other things happening. There's going to be some craft fairs happening in and around. And Pan American Cycle Cross Championship is going to be at Big Sky Park in Maverick Stadium. Um, the, there's going to be a Big Sky High School Craft uh, Drama Craft Fair starting at 9 a.m. on Saturday at Big Sky High School. Grace UMC Harvest Bazaar, Grace United Methodist Church, is going to have their own bazaar sale starting at 9 a.m. Used book sale at Fort Missoula. This annual event is happening this weekend as they love to support from the community. And this event meant to uh, fund many of the services at the accredited historic museum at Fort Missoula. Um, they are on track to re recreating the barracks at the internment camps that were there during World War II. And so they got that huge grant for that, but they're also always looking for continuing fundraising for support for their services that they uh, consistently have to uh, show folks history of Missoula and beyond. Um, let's see. Missoula Public Library is doing a special International Games Month game day at your library. Celebrating gaming and library during the International Games Month, they'll provide video games, tabletop games, and snacks. Check out the newly expanded role-playing game collection with the new Dungeons & Dragons score, source book and more. Play in the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Tournament or play some Halo with your friends. Board games from the library's awesome game collection will be available for free play or to check out. Gamers can bring their own laptops to games to share. Find us on the Cooper Room on the fourth floor and check out the gaming stations on the first floor, Game On. So that's going to happen at, starting at 10 a.m. at the Missoula Public Library tomorrow. Um, Fall Craft and Vintage Market, St. Anthony Parish is also doing their own craft and vintage markets starting at 10 a.m. at St. Anthony Parish Hall, 10 a.m. Missoula M Museum Tour, this is weekly at the Missoula Art Museum. This is a, a guided tour at 11 a.m. every Saturday at Missoula Art Museum. Can the Cats is a huge fundraiser that uh, leads up to the Brawl of the Wild, Brawl of the, Wild uh, the regular rivalry between uh, University of Montana and Montana State University as they campaign to raise the most food for people. This uh, is at many pop-up locations with the food bank being the main beneficiary. Um, MCAT is also doing our Saturday drop-ins. It's a weekly event happening from 1 to 3 p.m. It's a great opportunity for kids to do some stop animation. Live music uh, happening uh, Saturday night at 5 p.m. at Liquid Planet by Sam Nelson. Uh, folk music, Imagination Brewing Company at 6 p.m. on Saturday. Good old, good old Faction will be playing. Patty Griffin will be playing at the Wilma, playing some folk music at 7 p.m. on Saturday. Uh, Missoula Folklore Society Contra Dance is going to be at the Elk, Elks Lodge Ballroom starting at 8 p.m. Um, way down north, it's going to be some bluegrass of the old post at 8 p.m. Uh, as always, Westside Lanes and Fun Center is going to be doing a karaoke at 9 p.m. Chris Moon every Saturday at 10 p.m. at the Badlander. Off in the Woods, Top Hat will be playing some uh, music uh, by a funk band called Off in the Woods. Let's see, what else do we have going on here as well? Um, usually uh, the libraries have some kind of cool events happening on Sunday, so I want to um, let you guys know about this one happening at 2.30 on Sunday. Uh, Nanoi Raimo, it's the uh, National Novel Writing Month write-in, come in, come write. They're taking, uh, they're trying to write a book a in the month. It's amazing how many words you can get into a page when you're surrounded by people who are actively writing. Bring your laptop, pen, and paper, or anything else electronically provided by us, words by you. And this is happening at the Missoula Public Library at 2.30 p.m. Um, like I said, used book sale doing day two at the Fort Missoula, uh, starting at 10 a.m. Missoula Symphony, like I said, uh, they have their show at Saturday night at 7.30, but they'll have a 3 p.m. show at the Denison Theater on Sunday afternoon. Um, and like I said before, there's going to be a Gaza Peace Vigil for folks who are um, worried about the uh, uh, Israel-Hamas uh, war, and we're worried, and so they're going to have a vigil for peace with uh, Jewish, Muslim, and Christian faith leaders in Missoula hosting this peace vigil this Sunday at 5 p.m. And this is going to be at the University Theater on the uh, University Center Theater, uh, which is on the third floor. All right, so that about does it for me and my morning show, and I wanted to thank you guys for joining me and for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp.